I'm good. What about you? I'm pretty good. Thank you for asking. You, uh, what is uh? What's your religious background? Your mom? I'm Muslim. I'm Muslim. All right. Huh? I said okay. That's nice. That's nice. No, okay, thank you, man. You disagree, all Christian? Christian? Yeah, all Christian. Yeah, everyone here is Christian. Yeah. Oh, nice. So we, we all believe that uh, Jesus is God. So, like, the room title is like, uh, "Can you change any of our minds?" I suppose. Uh, what is what is uh, what? Uh, okay, why you don't believe in Muhammad as a prophet? Because well, he contradicts Jesus. Yeah, oh? fundamental. Yeah. He what says that know? Jesus yeah. isn't God, and uh, he is. Okay. Yeah. So the thing that I believe Muhammad as a prophet, you know, that he sent to people who were the, uh, like their pagans, you know, Arab before the Islam, they were pagans. They don't believe in God. And Muhammad come to them and said, believe in God, in one God. His name is Allah. And your belief is the Father. You believe that Allah so is the Father? Yeah. But huh. he don't have a son. I think he meant that we believe that um, Allah is the Father. Wait, guys, no, you know what he, you know what he just said though, because no, in, uh, in the, wait, wait, this let me. In the Quran, in the Quran, said, said Allah, the the Christians say to me, I, I have a son. So you you tell us like the Allah have a son. So, so, so we ben, believe in ben. Allah, in, in your so, so in your belief is oh, the Father. On. So Ben, if he's yeah. the Father, but he doesn't have, he a, have a son, so, so he is then Allah. How, then how is he a father? No, in your belief, I'm saying in your belief, you don't believe in God, like the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. But we if, worship but the if, Father as Allah. We don't we, we don't believe He is Father, you know? You think that so, I, I, huh? so Allah is a Father? He's, no, in your, not, I'm telling you in your belief, yeah, let's, not let's in be, my belief. Let's be, chari let's be charitable here. So we, we understand what, what, you, what you're saying. We understand what you're saying. I, okay. So you're saying that in our belief, you know, our belief, we believe that that God is is the Father, um, but yeah. in, your, in Islam, Muhammad says the God that yeah. we're talking about, we're, we're misunderstanding him. He's not. He's not a yeah. Father. Yeah. Okay. So that, that that's why that's a that's a large reason why we reject Muhammad because all the prophets before Muhammad they taught that God was the Father, and he. There so is he, no prophets before Muhammad uh, until Isa. Well, From Isa to Muhammad directly. Well, yeah, I'm talking about all the prophets before Muhammad, like Jesus, Moses, you know, Isaiah, Ezekiel. Uh, Moses right? said that is Jesus. Talk about Jesus, Moses. Oh uh, yeah, Moses prophesies about Jesus, but specifically, I'm talking about how Moses teaches that God is the heavenly Father. So, like, yeah, most you have Moses that teaches this. You have Jesus that teaches this. All the prophets in between them teach that the same thing. But then Muhammad comes after Jesus. It says, no, God is not the father. So you see how, like, for us, that's why we would we would see Muhammad as a false prophet, because he contradicts the message of the previous prophets. So Moses uh, told, like, uh, Jesus is God. Uh, <clears throat> not not as clearly as that. But yes, like, you know, he taught that God is multipersonal. He taught that. In which, in, uh, in which verse? So you have so sure. So you have Deuteronomy chapter thirteen verse. I'm sorry, Deuteronomy. Uh, from chapter the Bible, of course. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I don't have the Bible right with me. It's okay. I got it. But you have Deuteronomy chapter thirty-two verse six, where Jesus, or I'm sorry, where Moses says that Yahweh, that's the name of the God of the Bible, Yahweh, uh, mm -hmm. is the Father. Right? He's the Father who created you. That's what he says in Deuteronomy thirty-two six. That's the Torah. He also says in Exodus chapter three and Exodus chapter 23 and in Genesis that the messenger of Yahweh, the angel of Yahweh or the messenger, the Malik of Yahweh, right? He is also one in essence with Yahweh, the father, even though he's sent by the father, he's distinct from Yahweh, the father, but he's still one in essence has the same substance as the father, as Yahweh. So that's two. Two persons, one divine being. And then you have the Holy Spirit that he describes in Genesis chapter one. He talks about the Holy Spirit, the spirit of God. That's also one in essence with Yahweh. So that's three. You have the father, you have the messenger of Yahweh, 
who's divine himself, and you have the spirit of God. All talk about Jesus. But you are talking like from the Bible, not I don't know. You know what I'm saying? This yeah, is the Bible. What she, what she said, the Bible, not the Moses or, or Abraham or I don't know. Well, no, they, yeah, this is this, the, this, this is, is from the Bible. Yeah, this not is from the Torah. Yeah, Moses. This is the Torah. Them the Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The first five books of my Bible. That's what the Torah is. The Jewish don't believe in that. Yes, they do. They believe in. They believe it. They they don't believe in Jesus. They believe in no one God. Well, yeah, they were they reject Jesus, but they have the same scriptures that I do. Yeah, we know the Quran said they reject Jesus as a prophet. Yeah, but you you're, you're missing what I'm saying. They have the same scriptures that I do, although they disbelieve in the Messiah. But they have the same scriptures that I do. They they know that we have the Torah. We have we have the Torah. So why why would the Jews be a standard of? truth here right like for example like muslims quote the torah to try to prove that like muhammad is prophesied in deuteronomy 18 or something like that why, why couldn't a christian just say well the jews don't believe that therefore you're lying right just like appealing to the jews isn't gonna like make your position true or false just because a certain group of people believe or disbelieve in what you're saying because when I, I read the Bible, honestly, I read the Bible, but I didn't understand the meaning of the God. When I read the Quran, I understood what it is very simple to understand the God. In the in the Bible, when I read um, my respectful, uh, God cannot take a rest. You know what I'm saying? God cannot take a rest. He is God. You know what do I'm you, saying? You think the, do you think we think that God literally like rested? Like he needed. To. Yeah, in the in the first place in the Bible, when God so, when God created the earth and the heavens, yeah. he took so, a rest. And that's just a metaphor for God seizing in his creative work, right? So, for so example, it, yeah. So, for example, when you read the rest of the Old Testament, it will tell you that God does not sleep. God does not rest. Yeah. For example, in the Psalms, it says God never sleeps, right? God never rests. Now, that means that in Genesis, it's not telling you that God literally took a nap because he got tired from his cre from his creation. No. It just means that that creative work ceased. It's a metaphor. Yeah, so, so then, it doesn't ben, you, ben, sense you know, to say it rest, ben, you know? Ben, you know Hebrew, right? Hebrew, yeah. Yeah. So what does Vayus Bolt mean? Vayus Bolt. I don't know. It means and he rested. And, and do you know rested. what the root do you know what the root word of that is? No. It's it's Shabbat. <laughs> so do you do you know what Shabbat means? No. I, I guess you don't know Hebrew. It means to repose or to stop exerting. It simply just means to stop. Oh. This is why this is where we get the this is where we get the word Sabbath from or Shabbat because Shabbat means to stop on the on Shabbat you stop working you stop working okay. so it's yeah. not saying that God got tired or that God fell asleep it's just simply that he stopped working if you know Hebrew you should know this no, I, I understand the meaning of the Hebrew, not, not like this, you know? I, I know the Hebrew in Arabic, like, uh, you know? The, you uh, know but the, the Hebrew Quran, in can, Arabic can, or the Hebrew and Arabic? I'm trying to in, 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 but there in Arabic. Is little I, I learn know, Arabic. But there's <laughs> little to no Hebrew in Arabic because they're, they're sister languages, but they're not the same. So do you, Les, do you understand at least now that you know what it means when it says God rested on the seventh day? Uh, maybe. Huh? No, it is not illogical. You know what I'm saying? In the Quran, you cannot find like find uh, this. Wait, what, what's what's illogical about what Black Doctor and Thomas told you about what it means? The, the Bible said that, like the like the uh, verse Luke fourteen twenty six. No, 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 you're, you're moving I, on to something else. What? Okay. Yeah, like, I, what, what, I, what, I cannot what, believe in this. What, what was what was the point that Thomas and Black Doctor made to you about God resting according to that verse? What did they say it means? It it means like, it say he, he take a rest, but it doesn't mean he take a rest like that. What did they say? <laughs> yeah, what, 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 did, what did they say, though? What did they say it means? What I said, 
it right in, in the Bible, it take a rest, but it doesn't mean it take a rest like this. So, so it sounds. I, did, I me, understand this. It sounds to me that you didn't listen or care to listen. I listen. To what they had to say, or maybe you did listen to it, but you're purposely like you know being obtuse about it. Well, my English is my fourth language, so. No, your no, your English is just fine. Uh, you're uh, and we. This is my fourth language. We, we, we see we see a lot of guys like you. You know, it's like we. You know, yeah. We we know your type, so. Avery, do you, do you remember who this guy is? Yeah, I can hear his voice. Oh, I never been here. Mm. So yeah, so you got the answer on that. Uh, if you want to stick to uh, whatever your misrepresentation of the text, that's fine and all dandy. But uh, Moses, because you didn't respond to this, except you just appealed to to what Jews might understand. Uh, Moses in the Torah, as I showed you, spoke to, uh, taught that God is multi personal. You have the Father, you have the Messenger of Yahweh, you have the Spirit of Yahweh. Three persons, one divine essence. And you have Muhammad who comes later, who contradict what Moses and Jesus and the rest of the prophets taught about God. One being that he is the Heavenly Father. Okay. So that's why we reject. So, do, do, you, do you read the Quran before? Did you read yeah. the Quran? Yeah, I've read the Quran before. Do you find any mistakes? Yes, I find many. Wait, wait, can you tell me some? Yeah, sure, you got your Quran on you? No, wait. But I have it in Arabic, you know? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Okay. That's, that's actually better. Go to chapter 6. Chapter 6. Yeah. All right. Can you read it in English? Yeah. Yes, I got it in English. It says, Shall I seek a judge other than Allah, while it is he who sent down unto you the book, explained in detail? Those unto whom we gave the scripture know that it is revealed from your Lord and truth. Yeah. <laughs> so be not of those who doubt, excuse me. So it says that the book, speaking of the Quran, right, is explained in detail, right? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna give you one more that says the same thing. Go to chapter 12, Surah Yusuf. Go to the last verse of the chapter, the very last verse. Chapter, uh, chapter, wait, chapter the number of the chapter. Chapter 12. 12? Yeah, chapter 12. Surat Yusuf, meeting I like that you got the actual book. That's good. Huh? I said, I don't think you have the physical Quran on you. That's good. He's old school. Old school. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the verse? The very last verse. The last verse? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Indeed, in all the stories, there is a lesson of, for men of understanding. This is not a forged statement, but a confirmation of what came before and a detailed explanation of everything and a guide and a mercy for those who believe. Is that correct? No, uh, repeat it. There is no calm before. Indeed in their stories. Is that correct? Yeah. There is a lesson for men of understanding. Yeah. This is not a fabrication uh -huh. or a statement forged. But a confirmation, yeah, a confirmation of, of which, uh, which was before it. No. What does it say? The confirmation between your hands. Okay. Being your day or no worries. All right. So yeah, confirmation of that which is between uh, your hands. Yeah. Which would be the previous scriptures. Yeah. Which is yeah. And a detailed explanation of everything, yeah. and, and a guide and a mercy for those for the people who believe. 
Yeah. All right. So both verses that I showed you, they say the same thing. They say that the Quran is fully detailed and explained. Yeah. And that it's a detailed explanation of everything, not of some things, not of the things that may be important, not of just the things that are concerning your guidance or your salvation, <laughs> your religion. Yeah. It says that it is a detailed explanation of everything. So I'm being charitable because I'm not going to be I'm not going to be not reasonable or unreasonable. I don't expect the Quran to give me details about something it never talks about, like how to tie a shoe or how to build a microwave. I don't expect that. That would be unfair of me. But I expect when the Quran says this for it to be detailed about everything that it itself mentions and talks about, that everything in the Quran should be clear and detailed and explained. Fair enough? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So now here's the here's the contradictory verse that I'll show you. Go to chapter three. Now remember the two verses we showed. The Quran is fully detailed and explained about everything. Everything is clear. No, wait, 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 wait a minute. This the the verse you give me. Uh, this verse, the Yusuf verse. Uh -huh. It's not talking about the Quran. Oh really? Uh, the the first verse it is it is talking about the Quran, but this not. So what book is it talking about that came confirming what is between his hands? Like in this deep to believe it between your hands. It means like uh, when the Bible comes to Jesus. The this Bible is, when com is, comes this, to Jesus. This isn't about Jesus. It's, Wait, no, um, no, this is the old, you know, like we believe in the Bible and the Torah, who comes to G the prophets, gotcha. but not, you know, so, so but what Jesus is, spoke now, with the Bible, but got, this this is not your Bible that you have I, in between no worries, your hands. No worries, no worries. He that's spoke with the Bible. Not, yeah, that's not my point. So that the, yeah. what's between its hands, that's the Bible. So what came confirming the Bible? The Quran. Very good. So it says this is not a fabrication, but a confirmation of that which is between your hands. So, yeah. so it's the Quran that's not a fabrication, and it's a confirmation of that which is between their hands. So it's all yeah. But like it is, it's talk about the real Bible, you know. No worries. That, that's fine. Just that's yeah. not my contention. So the Quran is confirming the real Bible. My point is, is that this verse is talking about the Quran, that the Quran is not a fabrication, right? It's a confirmation of the, that which is between his hands. And the Quran is a detailed explanation of everything. And it's a guide and a mercy for those who believe. Okay. All right. So if you go to chapter three, verse seven, that's three, where what? Is. Chapter three. Chapter. Chapter three. Chapter three. Three. Yes. Okay. Which, uh, which verse? Verse seven. Seven. Okay. Wait. <sighs> yeah. The long one. The long or the. Okay. What are the answer? My friend Hamza's here. What up, Hamza? You can come up whenever you feel like it, man. Is this uh, Hamza's den or? Yeah. 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 Okay. But yeah, go ahead, uh, Ben. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm reading. Yeah. Huh. While he's reading, I got to get to class. I'll see you later, Logic. Oh, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got to get this smart somehow. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Be blessed, you guys. Take care, yeah, bro. Have, have a good one. It was nice meeting you, man. God bless. You. Bless you, Thomas. Truly. Have you ever read the whole Quran, Thomas? No, I've read bits and pieces of it, but to be honest, my um, my focus is more on like um, a defense of the Bible than like um, a polemical. I, I think it's fine. I think it's a good thing to do polemics. It's just um, I'm not as like well read in just like the pure scriptures of the Quran. I, I know about like 
philosophical beliefs of different groups of Muslims, which I will usually use as an attack. But that my my bag is more sort of like talking to them about what their philosophy entails. That's your, that's your bag, you said, and philosophy. Yeah, that's more of my uh, kind of bag. Like when you see videos of me at Speaker's Corner, that's usually what I'm, I'm talking to them about. So what would you say, you know, for guys like me, who um, I'm not, a, I'm not the philosophical guy, you know, I'm more, you know, I'll, I'll attack your scripture and the hadith and, you know, defend the Bible scripturally and stuff like that. I don't really, where, where, where would I start if I wanted to get, you know, sharp philosophically? I would say study sort of like Aristotelian kind of metaphysics. So there's a guy called uh, Dr. Edward Faser, who has a good book called An Introduction to Scholastic Metaphysics, right? You could start off by reading that. So you're going to want to like familiarize yourself with terms like um, ontology, being, essence, potency, why there's a distinction between active and passive potency. You want to familiarize yourself with um, things about modality, like necessary beings and contingent beings. And to, to be honest, when you study all this stuff as well, it ties in a lot of stuff together, right? And the reason is, is because once you know, um, and by the way, I'm not like a shake, I'm not like anything on philosophy, like I'm, I'm a layman myself, right? But this is just what I've noticed in my journey, that once you learn philosophy, it ties into every single person that you're speaking to and what they believe about certain things. Like, for example, if I'm speaking to an Afari Muslim, right, I can speak to them about like how it's illogical to affirm that God has two right hands in a literal sense because you can't like define the term without anthropomorphizing God. Or if I'm speaking to an Ashari Muslim, I'm going to say, OK, you guys believe that free will doesn't exist. How do you get around the problem of evil if you deny that free will exists? Right. Or something like that. Right. Yeah. Huh. So it, with every person that you speak to, when you have some certain knowledge on philosophy, you'll be able to adapt the conversation to that person, which, which I find is quite good. Yeah. So, so can you message me then? Like, because you mentioned that book, I already forgot the guy's name. Just, yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah. Message me the like a book that you said I should start with, and yeah, you know, I'll, I'll message you some some uh, books and stuff. Once I get off this live, I'll message you that. Because especially with things like um, God's essence, right, yeah. and what what like, so one, once we prove that a God exists, right we can do an analysis of what we think that that type of God would be. And a reason why this is important is because this would seem to narrow down like what beliefs are true and false, right? And if like something is contained in Islamic uh, philosophy, which goes against what we can know from the natural revelation of just our logic about God alone, then we know that like Islam can't be true. So for example, like one of these things would be, at least in Sunni Islam, so like if you're a um if you're a shia or if you are a sufi this wouldn't apply no, the, the all kufar, the all kufar. <laughs> yeah so he thinks they're kufar right but <laughs> yeah, yeah i would say that if, if you're a sunni and you believe that there are real distinctions i am not sunni i am i am muslim you cannot yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, say i am sunni or muslim yeah i'm not talking to you i'm just talking to like logic in the audience right so like one of the beliefs of like uh the Akidas of Sunni Islam, like Afaris, Ashuris, and Mataridis, is going to be that there's a real distinction between the attributes of God, right? But like an obvious entailment of that is that if each attribute isn't the whole of God, then that means that there is something about the subject Allah which isn't the whole of the subject Allah. But that's just the definition of like what a part is, right? A yeah. part is something about the subject which isn't the whole of it. So then like you can critique them on, oh, now like your view of God has parts, right? But what we know from like logic alone is that God can't be made up of parts. Yeah. So that, that would be like an example of like how you can utilize philosophy. That's exactly what I said. Everything you said is exactly what I said. <laughs> yeah, logic taught me, guys. He's, he's my teacher now. <laughs> I'm your teacher, boy. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I want to 
that it's philosophy, bro, and church history slash you know. Um, uh, oh yeah, that's, that's important. important as well. Yeah, because you, you're gonna get like um, you're gonna get critiques against Christianity from like the belief of early Christians. So like uh, you're gonna get like people like Muhammad Hijab trying to say, oh, no one in the first 300 years of Christianity believed that the Holy Spirit was God. He was added later. And like <laughs> weird <laughs> lies like that about the church fathers, right? Yeah. When you actually read them, you'll see that like the Trinity is actually like a really early like doctrine that we see in the fathers. Right. And then, then you get like things like, oh, Justin Martyr, like, oh, he compares Christianity to the pagan religions at his time. Therefore, Christianity must have been borrowed from pagan religion. And like, you just get all kinds of like weird arguments from the fathers that they try and like take out of context. Yeah. Tough. All right. Well, oh, I'm, I'm kind of excited. You kind of got me hyped. <laughs> ben, did you, uh, did you read the verse? Yeah. So you saw how it talked about how um, that how the Quran has clear verses that are the foundation of the book, right? Yeah. And then how it said it also has uh, unclear verses that um, you know that people with deviants, deviant hearts try to use to basically trick believers. Um, and only God knows the meaning of those unclear verses, right? Not, no, no they, are, they are all clear, not all of them. Like Except just one, Kaha Ain Saad, just the beginning, in the sum of the chapter, you know? But I didn't, I didn't really understand what you said. They all are simple. Well, it says that there are there are clear verses that are the foundation of the book, and then it says that there are unclear verses that only Allah you know uh, unclear. You know, like in the chapter uh, chapter three, the first verse, the first verse. What about it? The first word. This is like unclear. Alif lam mim. This is not. You know, we don't know what it means. Gotcha. Okay, so. Yeah. Right, no worries. So, so this is where the the mistake is. This is where the contradiction is. The Quran says, that, and remember the verses that I showed you. It says that there are that the Quran is fully detailed and explained about everything. Yeah. But uh, ver chapter three, verse seven says that there are some clear verses, and then there are some unclear verses. Like, and you gave me an example of one. Ch the chapter three, verse one is an unclear verse. You know. You don't know what that means. The word, just the first word. Yeah, just yeah, the first verse. So that would be a contradiction. Either the Quran is a detailed explanation about everything, or there's some unclear verses. It can't be both, and that's where the contradiction is. Read the second verse in the same uh, chapter. <clears throat> Allah. Huh? No, Not in English. Right to be worshipped, but he um, has living. Like, like Arabic, Arabic words. The ever living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. You said the second verse, right? Chapter 3, verse 2? Yeah. Yeah, it says Allah. Not Allah. That's what I see. Is not Allah there? Or is that uh, Allah? Chapter 3. Yeah, chapter 3, verse 2. Read the f first one. The right, first so the, verse. Yeah, so the first verse says Aleph Lam Mim. Yeah. Aleph Lam Mim. That's it. Okay, keep going. Verse two. The the third verse the first verse. Aleph Lam Mim, the God there is no God, uh, just Allah is the living. This is the first verse. Not in chapter three. So Ali Umran. In chapter three all it says is Aleph Lam Mim. That's all it says. The first verse says that. Yeah. No, it's wrong. No. Uh, look, I, I even got the Arabic here. I'll play it. I can play the audio. Um, just listen carefully. Hold on. So verse one, and watch me play it. Alif Lam Allah So that's verse two now. 
So yeah, so verse verse one, all it was was Allah. Yeah, mim, you know, alif la mim, Allah. This is it's the same verse, not this, uh, the same verse. Uh, alif la. Okay, well, no, no worries. I don't want to get stuck here, but so what? What uh? What the, you... Okay, uh, complete. نزل عليك الكتاب. This is. So alif la mim. Allah, there's none to be, none has the right to be worshipped, but He, the ever living, the one who sustains all, sustains and protects all that exists. What, what is, what is this? What is, what do any of this have to do with? Like, how does this help the contradiction, the mistake? You are not reading the Quran, the Angel and the Torah, the Bible and the Torah. You didn't read it. That was that's verse three. But, yeah. But what? How does that help with the contradiction? That we believe in the in, the, in your Bible, not uh, between your hands, you know. Well, that, that's fine. I'm not talking about my Bible. I'm talking about the Quran itself. The Quran itself has a contradiction. In your belief, this is what you believe. Yeah, the, well, the Quran says that that is the clear, detailed explanation of everything. Then it says that there are some unclear verses. That's a contradiction. It can't be both. Wait, uh, logic, what's the contradiction here? The contradiction is... Okay, I will search thing. about what you say about will be after... Because uh, I have to break my fuss, you know? Okay. Uh, just uh, I'm gonna read what you said. Uh, write what you said. Okay. The, give me the first... Uh, what you said, the verse. It's chapter 12. Chapter 12. The very last verse, verse 111. And uh, before it, uh, and this is okay. Okay, oh, mm -hmm. the verse three. You have chapter three, verse seven. So these two verses are the contradiction. Yes, one one uh, chapter twelve, verse one eleven says that the Quran is detailed and explained about everything. Okay. Uh, and in chapter three, verse seven, it says that there are some some clear verses, while also having some unclear verses. Okay. I'm gonna search about this and maybe tomorrow or okay can you do me a favor like sure I just uh, the open the Bible look 14 26 and after that I will break my fast you know I'm fasting because the... the context of Luke 14 26 isn't that he's trying to tell you that to be a disciple you have to hate every single like person around you i i read the bible like, and i am respectful i'm just saying that i am I'm telling him to read it i am not talking with you man yeah but the, with the all quran, my respect like him he, he gave me the verse from the quran i give him the verse from the yeah, bible the that is i am not i am not just for learning man okay Why well you? if you're if you're here for learning then you'll listen to the answer right but i'm talking with him not you He's here though. He's, he can speak. Been, with you. I've been talking with both of us the whole time. I I told yeah. him to 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 read the verse. Just that because I read the verse, I it is illogical, you know. I, okay, yeah, that's because you don't read the context. Uh, of, yeah. God logic, can you? Yeah, hey, Thomas is answering you, my friend. So let him give an answer. No, I want you to oh, read you, the verse. You don't want me to answer you. <laughs> I want to just to read the first one. <laughs> I, I mean. Logic, if you if you want to answer him, because apparently I'm, I'm forbidden. No, no, I, I I'm I, I have a little oh, so rude, man. a little Thomas, bit. Of, oh, so rude. I'm a little prideful, bit uh, Thomas. So when someone like on my stage tries to tell who can talk and who couldn't, I I tend to do the opposite. So go ahead and give the answer, Thomas, like okay. you're about to. Okay, so if you actually read the verse before and the verse after, it will make it clear as to why he said this, right? So it says, large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning them, turning to them, he said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Now listen to the next verse. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. So the context isn't that you have to hate everyone around you to be a disciple of Christ. It's more of a metaphor for saying what the cost is of being a disciple of Jesus. Because obviously in early Christianity, to be a disciple of Christ meant to leave many valuable things to you, give up everything that you saw in the world and follow Jesus. And Jesus is saying, if you want to be my disciple, you have to put me first before all these other things. That's the context of the verse. 
but he could said like this is what you said he could write it in the bible not i need to understand another thing that you are telling me that i read the, the, the verse and i need to understand like the other way well it's the opposite of it it's, it's, this is the, it's, the point it's, it's called reading comprehension when you read something not to just read but to but it is very simple it is well, it say it does yes, not yes, hate yes. Hold on, excuse, okay. me, excuse me man it's very simple when you are reading to understand what's being said instead of, you know, I guess trying to come up with some some argument against it. When you exactly. read what it says, bro, and you understand what he's saying, it's there. You there's no problem with it at all. Um, so, so what makes more sense? Right? What makes more sense? Ben's interpretation of the verse that Jesus is telling you that in order to be a disciple, you have to just hate everyone for absolutely no reason. And even though Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew says that you should love your enemy, that you should love your brother, you should love thy neighbor, even though he says these things, uh, you see, he's going to say Jesus is contradicting himself. Or is it more possible? I don't say that. The Bible says that. I, I don't believe that Jesus said that. Say that Jesus is consistent in his teachings and that this is, actually isn't what he means by this, but he's actually talking about the cost of what it means to be a disciple. And that's why he says that if you, you do not carry your cross and follow him, you cannot be a disciple. Maybe that's what makes more parsimonious sense. Yep. All right, my friend, go ahead and break your fast. You could come back with the answer whenever you're ready. Uh, and, uh, uh, when, when? Um, well, I, I'll be I'll be live on YouTube in a few hours. Um, Give me your channel, wait. Do you have? Uh, yeah, it's on my it's on my page. It's like linked to my bio. If you click on my profile and, and push the YouTube button, it'll take you right to my to my YouTube channel. Thank you, man. All right, take care. Take. God bless. God bless.